Hello everyone and welcome to today's uh, video. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're actually going to be switching gears from Illustrator to Photoshop and uh, what we're going to be focusing our efforts for is just some basics. Uh, like someone who's never used Photoshop before, you'll probably find that this will be a good uh, video to start off with. Uh, what we're going to just do is I'm going to talk about the interface a little bit. Uh, we're going to take elements from one picture and put it into another and uh, we'll take a look at some very simple changes you can make uh, just either using uh, brightness and contrast of some simple transforms and even get into the clone stamp tool today so let's give this a shot okay so similar to illustrator uh, you'll see that you'll have some presets over here you'll find that the video and film uh, will also be particularly helpful and uh, just a bunch of other presets you'll find useful as well. Just a couple things to kind of keep in mind, uh, just use a preset that we've used previously, is uh, besides, of course, having the inches and all the other measurements we have here, you also have an additional couple areas to kind of keep in mind. Uh, elements like resolution, which would be pixels per inch or PPI. Some of the times people know this as DPI as well. Uh, this basically affects how many pixels per inch you have, Mostly it's helpful if you use this in the inches uh, or any other kind of measurements. If you do use it on pixels, it can be a little confusing. So I definitely would turn this up a little bit, uh, at least to 300 when you're working with inches to get really good quality and such like that. Uh, later on, if you're planning on taking something to the internet, you might want to put that down to 72 so it actually can upload and so on. But that's a topic for another time. You also can change the color mode and also the background color. Now that's not really going to make too much of a problem for us today, but the are elements that are kind of good to know. Now, in terms of getting started, just going to get out of here. Uh, we're actually going to start off with a very simple uh, little street, and we're going to add in some elements over here. Now, similar to uh, Illustrator, we can go to our upper right over here and change the type of interface that we have. My recommendation is usually just go into Essentials and reset those essentials. And uh, you'll see that this area over here is a little bit bigger than we really need. So I'm gonna actually cut this down a little bit. Ah, looking very good. And most of the other elements that you, that you might need can be found here, including, but not limited to, your properties, in case you need to change anything here, uh, your layers, in case you need to make adjustments. This is going to be probably one of the most important areas that you can know of. And uh, there are all the tools that could be found in this area. Now, some shortcut keys that you might remember from the previous software can be used here. Things like zoom, if you hit Z for zoom, you can zoom in like so. And if you use the Alt or Option key, hold that down, you can zoom out as well. That makes this very useful. And the space bar still does the same thing. We can use the space bar to move up and down all around wherever you need to. But again, uh, I'm gonna go to my Z and just zoom out. If necessary, the zoom can also be found at your lower right that's over here. And uh, just as a, as a place for me to start off with, I'm just gonna have the little arrow over here. This is your move tool. Uh, we will be using this a little bit later. Okay, so let's actually, oh, one other thing to kind of keep in mind, uh, if you wanna know what a tool does, nice thing about this software is if you just move your mouse icon to anywhere, It'll give you a short explanation of what these do, but I like to think that I can give everyone a little bit of an idea of what this does as well with my explanations. So, uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to import something very simple. I'm going to import a door. So, I'm just going to open this up, and I'm just going to do this in a very simple manner. So, I'm going to basically do a simple copy and paste from one file to another. Now, the way that I'm going to approach this is I'm going to use this tool, called the, the Marquee Tool. Some people know this is the marching ant tool. And what this is going to do is with the rectangular element turned on over here, as you can see, I'm going to go from my upper right to my, sorry, my upper left to my lower right. There we are. I think that looks pretty good. On second thought, I don't like this after all. So I want to deselect this. So this gets into a good moment for us. If you right click, you'll see an option called deselect. So you could basically deselect uh, whatever you have selected. This is important that every time that you're done with something to deselect it immediately. You don't want to have something selected and have elements potentially try to t change in areas you don't mean them to. So again, I'm just clicking and dragging 
I'm going to go to edit copy or if I go to control or command C right now I'm using a PC but if I were using a Mac it would be command copy and I'm just gonna go over here and I'm gonna paste this in place there we are so command or control if you're using PC paste now something you'll notice immediately is that a layer all of a sudden appears and my door is ready to move around if I use the move tool I could basically just put this wherever I need now something to help out in case you notice that your actual picture is just uh, kind of moving a little bit more than it should when you're trying to move it in place if I use the zoom key and zoom a little bit closer and again I'm hitting V for for move you'll find that certain areas will be a little bit more agreeable if you move it that way so I'm pretty satisfied with that the joys about using Windows is uh, the Windows button is very close to the alt so so that might happen a couple times just warning everyone here okay so well, my door is here and by the way to change the layer name very similar to Illustrator you just double click the layer of choice and we just name this door now something to kind of keep in mind when you're making new layers uh, you're not going to see a little drop down like we saw with Illustrator before so this is where some of the differences come in besides the fact that this is a raster image uh, manipulator uh, but if you were to add in any other pictures for this layer uh, there would be no drop down they would just be part of the same layer so that's something to kind of keep in mind now in terms of what I have here the door is looking okay but in all honesty the door looks kind of big so I think I really should take the moment to shrink this down easiest way to do that is one of two methods I can go to edit and there's an option here called transform and you'll see a bunch of options over here that you can take advantage of things like scale rotate skew distort uh, perspective all these can uh, basically affect your uh, picture or alternatively there's an option here called free transform if you have a Mac it'd be command T here uh, for my PC it's control T and uh, what I'm just gonna do here is I'm gonna hit command T and a nice thing about the layer that's selected is uh, basically allows me to just shrink this down a little bit or move around or potentially rotate depending on what I need and of course if you command or control Z it undoes what you have very useful little tool there we are I think this can go down a little bit further there we go now I'm pretty happy with this cool and just hit return when you're done on the PC you'd be using enter so I'm going to do this one more time to just give an idea of how to approach this I'm no, no longer need this so I'm good so once again I'm going to my file I'm going to open this time I'm going to go to this little window over here and uh, one thing to kind of keep in mind because what I want to do just so you have an idea of my game plan is I want to put that window in the upper left hand corner so I don't actually need the entire window I just need enough to basically get this corner over here so that is something to kind of keep in mind once again I'm going to use the marquee tool because that'll be the simplest way and I'm just going to click and drag only the areas that I need so I'm only going to go this far to be honest and command C or edit copy will do the job and then I'm going to go to my previous one command or control V to paste this in now one thing they got to keep in mind and I just want to mention this for the future because this is going to come into play always keep in mind how big the image is you're copying from one to the other uh, one way that you could do that is if you go to image image size you can see exactly how big the picture is over here and also the resolution both are going to have factors on the size of the picture itself you can actually see the uh, dimensions over here so this is 1041 by 1600 if I go to this one over here the image is oops, by going to once again image image size this is uh, considerably bigger and that's okay because uh, we basically need this we kind of need this to be bigger anyway so uh, we're good so I'm just gonna take this picture once again I'm using the move tool in this case I really don't actually need to shrink it because I just need to bring it over here just make sure it overlaps uh, the areas that I have so uh, pretty simple stuff so far 
Just some copy and pasting like so. Now in future lessons, I'm going to show you how to import the picture directly into the file that you're working in because that could actually be kind of helpful for you as well. So let's take a look at a different way of selecting because we've already used the marquee tool. I want to now go into a little option called the quick selection tool. Now you might see that right away, you might not, but if you uh, click and hold this general area and the quick selection tool tends to be in the middle. I'm currently using Photoshop 2020, so yours might look a little bit different, but the placement of the quick selection tool st should still be the same. Okay, now, uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select something that's a little bit trickier than a door or a window. I'm actually gonna select this little buffalo, <laughs> little being a relative term, obviously. And with the quick selection tool, I can click and drag around this area, and you're gonna see that the selection is going around the buffalo itself. Now, if you want this to select a bigger area, and by the way, when I'm clicking and dragging around, uh, you'll notice that I don't, I didn't undo, or I, again, I would have to deselect if I want to start over again. Uh, but if you click and drag and let go, you can pick up where you left off. Now, this is a huge help when you're trying to do a more complex selection. Something else that will be helpful is the ability to uh, manipulate the actual brush size. Because right now, uh, this should be on plus, which it is, thank goodness. If it was on negative, it would have, a, as you can see, a negative selection over here. And well, while that's kind of helpful, the plus is a little bit more so because, of, because you can actually do a shortcut key uh, relatively simple. But before I do that, I'm gonna change the size because it's a little on the small size, as you can see over here, to be much bigger to select the buff, the bison as a whole. And if I need to deselect an area, which I'm going to need to, yep, here we go, you can use the Option key or the Alt if you're using a PC to deselect certain areas. Now, just for the sake of time, I'm just going to select the general area of the bison. I'm not going to get worry about getting the whole thing. Now, that's looking pretty nice. I'm going to clean up the feet a little bit, though. And I'm going to deselect these areas definitely deselect here deselect here and i'm going to zoom in and i'm going to use the quick selection in this case i'm going to change this down to maybe 20. there we go and again use the option key to deselect the areas now again i'm not worrying about every single little nook and cranny over here just trying to get the general gist of my bison Yep, there we are. And again, if anything gets deselected, you can always reselect it again. Yep, there we are. So, oh, just going to select one other area. Again, if you want the shortcut key, it is W. Ah, perfect. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the selection. Uh, so, so much what we did previously. Again, with the quick selection tool, which is over here. Uh, Control C or Command C if you're using a Mac. And over here, I'm hitting Command or Control V as in victory, or just go to Edit, Paste. Again, same stuff over here. And yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with my bison. Now, in this case, just for the sake of time, I'm just going to kind of put him over at the side right now. He's just kind of minding his business. He's just kind of walking through Sheep Street. I don't know. Maybe he wants to start a fight or something. I, I'm not going to judge. But uh, anyway, what I am going to do is I am going to make some adjustments and changes momentarily. Now, I'm pretty happy with how everything is, although I do want to rename my layers. It's just a good habit to get into so you know what's what. Okay, and just for the sake of safety, I'm going to save this. Save on my computer. And yeah, I'm just going to name this something quick. I'm going to call this Demo Bison. Obviously, you can name yours whatever you want. Just a heads up, though, unlike other softwares, uh, or at least uh, anything that's vector and whatnot, if you hit the drop down, you can actually export this as any kind of other image that uh, Photoshop has access to. And it does have quite a few. It has an option for, for GIF or GIF if you're trying to go for the, the quote unquote correct pronunciation. Uh, JPEG, 
You have options uh, for more higher fidelity pictures like Targa and TIFF and uh, pretty much almost whatever you need. You can even save your, your pictures as a PDF if you want to go that route. But I'm going to keep things simple. Just keep it as Bison, I'm sorry, Demo Bison and hit save and hit OK. So this way, if for some reason during the stream, uh, I accidentally turn off you know, anything important, I'm still good and I can still keep on working. So uh, what I'd like to do now is I want to change the brightness and contrast of my pictures. So uh, the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, and we're just going to use the very first one at top. Now, there's going to be a lot of options you have you can work with, uh, but for now, let's just keep things simple. And you're going to use the brightness and contrast specifically on the door. I'm not going to do too much of a change over here yet. Oop, that's a little bit later. Image, Adjustments, Brightness and Contrast. And I think I'm just going to actually turn down the contrast to see how this, oh, sorry, the brightness to see how that looks. I'm not too happy with that. I'm going to turn up the brightness over here just slightly. Turn down the contrast so it looks a little bit muddier. I'm okay with this. But the window, I'm definitely going to want to make that darker so that it matches this area a little bit nicer. So again, image, adjustments, brightness and contrast. I'm going to turn up uh, the contrast a little bit, but turn down the brightness so that, again, it fits a little bit nicer. Again, your, my goal is I'm trying to basically make these pictures match up a little nicer. Now that's that, That'll work. And I'm going to hit OK. Once that's done, so are you, at least in those two spots. So that's one way that you can approach this. You can use the brightness and contrast to basically brighten an area or darken an area. But what if you're in a situation where you need to kind of darken very specific spots? So for example, Maybe I want to go to Image, Adjustments, Brightness and Contrast, turn down the brightness. Oop. Make sure that you have the Bison selected when you do that. That part's important. I'm going to turn down the brightness, and yeah, it's mostly coming out okay, but there's a couple of areas over here that could be a little bit brighter by themselves, and like the rest of the Bison's actually looking pretty good. Yeah, so I'm not too happy with that. Now, if you want to just lighten and darken certain areas, there is a way you could do that. On to our left, uh, you should see an option called Dodge Tool. If you basically give this area a quick little uh, click, you'll see options for Dodge, Burn, and Sponge. Now, what each of these does is the Dodge Tool, when selected, and uh, if you want to change the size of this, if you right click, you can make the brush way bigger. Or you could go up here and do the same thing. Now hardness, this is going to be something that's going to come up again. The hardness will basically uh, make the brush either uh, a little bit more subtle or basically no subtlety at all. This is something we'll go into as we progress. But I'm going to put this at around 50% because that's a good middle ground. And the dodge tool, as you can see, is brightening things up. While the burn tool, again, I'm going to... Make this brush a little bit bigger. Make the hardness about 50%. That usually does this pretty well. And the burn tool literally will darken an area up. So yeah, so for this area over here, I just want to darken this slightly so it looks a little bit more consistent. Again, just clicking and dragging around to get the look that I'm looking for. There we go. Now, if you want to lighten up an area, so for example, down there, I can go to my Dodge and brighten this up a little bit. Just trying to make that a little bit more even. Although over here, the, the shadows would probably stay because, you know, they base, because again, that area is going to be hiding from the sun and so on. Whenever you're doing any kind of technique uh, in Photoshop, think of the logical reasons why that might change and such. Because again, you don't want to just do something without actually thinking of the consequences or the reason why those might be there. So just a little tip for the future. But anyways, now, now that I'm not going to really need this, but it's good to know what it does. The sponge, I'm just going to get, make this much bigger, will suck the color out of an area, give or take. 
make it a little bit more subtle. But I'm not a very big fan of doing this right now, so I'm just going to get rid of that for now. Um, but yes, so what we'll do for the final thing that I just want to show real quick is if you uh, need to get rid of any text, and that's going to be our main focus at this point, as I'm just going to get rid of the sheep area. I might just actually get rid of the entire street. Uh, but the way that we're going to get rid of this is if you go to the clone stamp tool, it basically looks like a little uh, stamp over here, clone stamp. Uh, what, what I could do is I could actually take colors from one area and paint it on another. In situations like what we have here, it basically gives the illusion of being able to get rid of letters and such. So for example, if I give this area a quick little tap, I can click and drag that area. Of course, it helps if you make sure that you're on the right layer. And one other thing to kind of keep in mind when you're working in Photoshop, if you're working directly from a picture, which I'm doing currently, it's always a good idea to de-lock or unlock the actual photo itself. In this case, uh, my background picture. And you can do that just by clicking the actual lock option. This changes this right to layer zero. So I'm going to try that again. Again, clone stamp tool. Click a general area where the color is pretty good. And now if I click this general area, though I might want to turn up my hardness because this is a little bit too subtle. Putting this to 50%, by the way. And you'll notice that a crosshair all of a sudden appears. I'm just going to bring this up and down a little bit. And I'm going to once again go to this little corner, hold Option or Alt, give it a quick little tap, and go upwards. Now it's important you make sure that when you're doing this kind of work, that you keep an eye on where that little crosshair is. Because again, if I click over here and try and go up to down, the first area is going to be okay, but if I go too far down, ooh, I'm just painting with this area over here. Definitely not a good thing. So I'm clicking down here. And I'm just painting along a little bit. And again, if, which, if I go down here uh, a little bit lower, it gives me a little buffer room when I'm trying to go up. Cool. Now, once you have a good chunk of an area, getting rid of other parts is way easier. Of course, it doesn't help if I go too far down. There we are. Now, the other parts, it's going to be a lot much easier now that I got rid of this. So if I go to the bottom area, again, just make sure that your brush doesn't touch the sides, and then just go to town. Don't have to worry about... Just getting one letter at a time, it makes this whole process much easier. Cool. And now I have an empty sign. Now this only works here because the colors for the sign were very similar to each other. So basically being able to get rid of those elements was quite easy. Not so easy if I'm trying to do something, say, like this rock over here. If I'm just trying to get one area of this rock and I'm just trying to just paint it over like so. I mean, it is possible. Actually, that ended up looking pretty good. But the more complex the element, the harder it is going to be to hide. So if I bring this over here, I could probably paint it over once, twice, and of course I have a little bit of a buffer area. Perfect. But again, the more complex the shape or complex the color, the more difficult it is to... Uh, merge them together but again this area was mostly white with some with a few blemishes here and there so that's why that part was particularly simple okay so two last things i want to show because this video is starting to get a little long is how to add in text that's pretty simple and also how to turn down the opacity now it's a good idea that i already have the layer uh, zero that's basically my background i'm going to rename that now anyways make sure it's properly spelled yep Remember, ladies and gents, when you're doing a project, if possible, make sure that the actual project is properly spelled. Last thing you want to do is be in a professional project and there's a minor weird spelling error that could have been easily fixed. That potentially can be bad for your career. So next, 
I'm going to just add in my own street. So I'm going to go to my uh, text tool over here. And again, if you click this real fast, you'll see that you'll have a couple options, but it won't be nearly as much as the options you have in Illustrator. But then again, there's a reason for that. Illustrator was meant a little bit more for graphic design and text. Uh, this was originally supposed to be for photo manipulation, although it's turned into pretty much almost everything. But that's a story for another time. So I'm just going to check the original default here. And I'm going to give this area a quick little tap and get see my lorem ipsum. I'm going to call this... Oop, one thing to kind of remember, your options are over here. And the most important one, sorry, the most important one, your color, which I'm going to make black. I'm going to call this Professor Street. And similar to what I had previously, I want to try and keep the font the same. So I'm going to go with a serif. I think Times New Roman should be a good one for this. Yeah, there we go. And I'm definitely going to need to make this way bigger in terms of the size. Oop, that might be a little too big. Perhaps at a 60 points. Cool. And just putting this down over here. Now, one thing that I'm doing uh, is I'm trying to make sure that my street actually matches up with my sign because my text is going completely horizontally perfectly. My sign is not. There's a little bit of an angle here. But that's easy enough to fix. I once again go to Edit, Transform, Rotate, and or I could just use the Command T to do the same thing, but I just want this to rotate a little bit, just trying to follow the sign angle. Yep, that's good. Then I could just hit Return, then use the Move tool to move this a little bit more in the center. And that's looking pretty nice. Last step over here is I could use the Opacity, which could be found in this area, hit the drop down, and I'm just moving this slightly down. And the reason why I'm doing this is so that the text doesn't look too perfect, that it looks a little faded, uh, maybe because of the sun, maybe because of time, who knows. But that's actually looking a little bit nicer now. I'm going to zoom out. And I like to think with the exception of the bison here, which has no real reason that it's here, just at, with the exception of showing how to do the quick selection, uh, this actually is looking pretty decent. Now, there's more of the stuff that could be done with this, but I want to kind of keep it here for now. So let's review. Going to File and New. Obviously, we'll get you some new projects. Uh, going to the upper right over here will allow you to choose your interface. Again, I'm going to Essentials, Reset Essentials. Uh, spacebar and Hold will move that around. Uh, the Z for Zoom, so you can zoom in and so on. Uh, we also went over the Marquee tool for a regular rectangular selection, though it can do ellipse. We went into the Quick Selection when we have to get a little bit more precise. We talked a little bit about the different tools over here, specifically the Dodge, which would basically light up an area, or Burn, which would darken an area. So there we go. That looks a little bit better. Or again, the Burn, which would darken it. Now besides that, we also talked about Edit, Transform, whether you're using the specific ones or the free. We talked about image, image size. We also talked about image adjustments, brightness and contrast, if you need to change anything. And we also talked about the clone stamp tool. Once again, if you need to copy of an area, use, oh, just going to zoom in so I can see this a little bit easier. You're going to use the, with the clone stamp tool selected, the Alt to select an area, give it a click, and then basically rub your mouse around the area that you want to paint that particular color. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea of how to get started with Photoshop. The next video we're going to be making is going to go into some more complex elements, starting to talk about different selections, importing, uh, modes, and some other special effects that we can use for this. Again, I uh, hope you found this video useful, and have a good night. Oh, don't forget to save. That also is important. <laughs>